Hello. Nobody was expecting this. Least of all me. But it's, uh, it's a good thing. How you doing? Ah, uh, first of all, I think it's important to show you my, my brand new Christmas jumper. Look at this. Mrs. Chapman absolutely delivered the win in bucket and spade loads. And uh, I should start off by apologizing. I've got, um, I've got a pretty nasty cold and I've, I've been ill for a few days. Hello, everybody. This is gonna be crazy. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm really excited because tomorrow I'm launching an album. Oh my God, there are so many people here already. <laughs> I'm launching an album tomorrow and I thought I'd talk about it live rather than just shoot a video and, and kind of go, oh yeah, I recorded an album, please go and buy it, blah, 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 blah. This album's different, man. Shout out to Trowbridge Brad. This album's different because this album really wanted to be made years and years and years ago. And uh, hello, Las Vegas. Uh, and I kind of didn't have the guts to do it. I was a bit nervous. It's quite, you know what, it's a scary thing making an instrumental guitar album when you, when you are a public figure guitar, like people know who I am that play guitar on YouTube and so I'm going to be compared to like people and then that makes me nervous and scared and I think to be really honest with you, it just took me a long time to kind of get the balls to think, fuck it, I'm just going to record this album um, and I'm going to be brave enough to face my own fears and the, you know, the difficulties of releasing an instrumental guitar album. Do you know what I mean? Um, yes, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Music, it's on everything. It's, it's on the internet is where it is. Hello, wife. <laughs> um, so I wanted to record it years ago. Didn't have the guts. And then I finally got the right team, the right people together and and just thought, to hell with it, I'm just gonna do it, I'm just gonna record this album. So the album is called Chromatic Aberration. Chromatic Aberration. And I'm releasing it under the, under the project name, Monkey Lord. And it's a tip of a hat to where I kind of came from. Initially, I mean, if you've been following me for years, you're gonna know this, um, but, I have a nickname that was given to me, which is the Monkey Lord. And it's a long story. I won't bother telling it because most of you will already know this. But anyway, so it's a Monkey Lord album. It's an instrumental soundscape uh, album where I imagine myself to be in six landscapes and I describe them musically. And I'm going to list them to you. I'm going to tell you the track names. I'm going to... Uh, these are some really nice comments, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to read out the track names and I'm going to tell you about each one, what I'm trying to do with it. And it's a concept album. This is a, a, a genuinely a concept album. And I think it's uh, something that I would like to do regularly. I'm even thinking about touring it. It's going to be <laughs> really hard to do that because um, it was all improvised. Um, but I'd love to go out and tour this and uh, meet some of you guys, you know, play small venues and just shred for you. So let me take you through the track lists and talk about each track, what it's about, and, um, and why I think it's kind of a unique uh, album, especially for me, because, you know, I'm, I'm a blues rock or a progressive metal guy. Um, this has elements of all of that, but in an instrumental offering. So... Chromatic Aberration, Monkey Lord. Track number one is called Arboreal Assault. That means attack from the trees. And um, it harks back to the days when on my old forum, we wrote the tome of the Monkey Lord, which was this story of a character called the Monkey Lord and how he led an army of simian warriors against some evil crab denizens of the lower cave dwelling areas and if this if you're still watching this then you're on board basically it was a post-apocalyptic 
um, you know, landscape and jungle had taken over cities and the only things that survived were simian overlord yeti creatures and then crabs in caves. Anyway, Arboreal Assault is uh, harking to one of the battles in the Tome of the Monkey Lord. And um, it's set in a landscape of tech jungle. So imagine jungle a thousand years in the future, the jungle that remains. So maybe we've got, I don't know, if we're lucky, 15 square miles of jungle. And then there are drones flying through it and pyramids and interesting craft floating through it, and trying to shoot seeds into the floor and seed clouds and all sorts of crazy stuff, you know. We're farming energy from the jungle and at the same time looking for things we still haven't found. So Arboreal Assault, track one, is, is set in tech futuristic jungle. And I place myself in it in my mind. <clears throat> I'll tell you about the backing in a minute because it's, it was an interesting process for me. And I sing it through the guitar. So I'm, I'm oblivious of mode, of key, of, of, of anything. I'm just trying to sing, but through my hand. And uh, it's kind of one of the shreddier ones. I really tried not to shred, but there are elements of the shred. And um, anyway, that's track one. Track two, Guided by Ghosts. So Guided by Ghosts is set in a sunrise desert environment. Uh, recently, I went to uh, California and I shot a music video for Clockwork Wolf and Company for the track In the Sunshine. And... It was an amazing experience. <laughs> I, I literally was, was on uh, at a cheesecake factory having a meal and the table next to me was a bunch of guys. We started talking about shepherd's pie because they didn't know what shepherd's pie was. And I said, look, I'm sorry, I've got to tell you, it's a pie with, you know, minced lamb and then potatoes and blah, blah, blah. I've got to do my bit for England, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, it turned out that one of them was a, a film producer. We hooked up and filmed a music video in the desert. The music video was really fun. I had to hunt down uh, the spirit of a Russian prostitute I had murdered. This could be weirder. Um, and partway during the filming of this music video, I'm on my hands and knees crawling through the desert, trying to get some water that she's dropping from a bottle. And I went, ah! Oh! And suddenly I put my hand on a, a cactus and I had thorns all in my palms. And I was just like, damn, this is bad. And I went, oh, I've been injured, I've been injured. Put my hand up and they stopped. And then one of the guys, the lighting guys, got a pair of pliers. You're paying me to ask me a question? You reached the album on Tidal Master Quality. Oh, I'm doing AAF uh, recordings. Thank you for, for paying me to ask questions. I didn't expect that. Please don't feel obligated. I will try and read some questions afterwards, but I very much appreciate you doing that. Um, Anyway, this lighting guy came out with a pair of pliers and he starts pulling the thorns out of my hand. And, and I just kind of thought, I just kind of thought the only way, because it really hurt, <laughs> it really, really hurt. And I kind of thought the only way I'm gonna get through this, I'm just gonna plug my phone in so it doesn't die, is if I put my mind somewhere else and I looked out and the sun was setting, it was beautiful. And we were literally recreating daylight using electric lights to the same color as the previous shot, so it was seamless. Dudes, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Uh, uh, thank you, you don't, you don't have to pay me for questions. I really appreciate you doing it, but you don't have to do it. But thank you much, I, I'm honored. Anyway, I'm looking out at this sunset in the desert and it is stunning. And I, it was like my mind took a photograph and then I put myself in it and I could kind of hear I'm a little bit synesthetic, my senses cross over and I could kind of hear music by, <laughs> by looking. Thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate you. Um, and it doesn't matter, I really appreciate you giving anything at all, it's very nice of you. So Guided by Ghosts is about this image that I saw in front of me when I'm having thorns pulled out of my hands by a lighted guy with a pair of pliers. And it was simultaneously beautiful and yet dark and twisted. And it describes a narrative of the sun rising instead of setting. 
um, over a beautiful, you know, Californian desert setting, cactuses, shotgun shacks, kind of wind rippling through the landscape. All of the music is either inspired or is actually sound from location um, that we've used from libraries. So rather than having a drummer and a you know, percussionist and a bassist, we're using... <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. I, I very much appreciate that. That was very nice of you. Um, you know, the sound of the wind or the sound of water, drops of water making arpeggios, uh, sand hitting against your back, all these different things creating textures and, and um, the melody and harmony to create tracks. That's guided by ghosts. Track number three, Weathered Husk, is uh, a soundscape inspired by a haunted shipwreck, uh, a sunken um, old wooden shipwreck, um, which is twisted and dark and something is trapped in it that wants to escape and it can't and so the palette we used it was imagine diving into the water to just go swimming and I thought I'd tell you the story so basically when I first met my wife she's from Malta she's looking at me probably um she um she said oh we're gonna go swimming and I was like yeah cool I can swim so that sounds fine and uh, we jumped in her father's little boat and we, we zipped out into the ocean, the sea even, not the ocean, sorry. And um, they all jumped out of the boat into the sea. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to going swimming you know, at the beach. There's a towel, you have a sandwich, a coffee, and you, you relax. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting to go into the sea and then jump out of the boat in the sea. You, you could barely even see, you know, the beach. And uh, it's the first time I'd really been swimming in deep water. And then to make things worse, I mean, there are sharks and dolphins and things. And I get a little bit uh, agoraphobic, the fear of space. And I look down and I can see these fucking big, big fish just going Wah! past me. And then things were biting my feet, my toes, and I was getting freaked out. And I just kind of thought, I have no idea what's underneath me right now. It could be anything at all, anything. And my imagination created this haunted shipwreck concept. So the track, Weathered Husk, it describes uh, diving into the water and then finding this big, twisted, um, sort of wooden, haunted wreck, a bit like in Skyrim on the beach. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we created arpeggios with dripping water. Like imagine finding inside one room that had been sealed and there was still air in it so you could walk and then the water was kind of coming through. It's a fun track and it was really difficult to, to play guitar over the sound of water uh, as a backing. The recent competition was a backing track created right from that. Track number four is Simeon Behemoth. And this is uh, a track inspired by a, a Tibetan or ne Nepalese mountain landscape. And um, I, I have a deep admiration for the people that live in that area, surviving in such a harsh climate environment, um, being so tolerant of each other's religions and ideologies. I don't know if you know this, but the Hindus and the Buddhists live hand in hand and they celebrate each other's ceremonies. And I think that's a beautiful thing. They're encompassing it. They, they celebrate it. They don't fight against it. I think the world could learn a lot from being tolerant and respectful of everybody's ideas and beliefs. Because ultimately we all, hopefully, just want to be kind of cool, friendly, chill out, have some fries and drink a coffee and make music and fun. And so I, anyway, Simeon Bermot, thank you, Dusty. I very much appreciate you doing that, dude. That was very nice of you. Um, so Simeon Behemoth is a giant Yeti creature stood on a huge mountain staring at the landscape and then roaming over it, kind of poof, massive footsteps. It was a fun one to, to do. It ended up sounding a lot like um, uh, Back to Shallow Bar. I think it was called by Joe Satriani. It was one of the tracks that, that I really, that stuck in my head for a long time. Um, Kevin O'Connor had a guitar stolen in Germany. It's special to me, spread the word. Kevin O'Connor lost an ML3 in Germany. Someone stole it. Please help him find it. 
The comments appear and then disappear gradually, so bear with me because I will get to them. Uh, track number five is Siberian, uh, Siberian Sunshine and Glacial Silhouette. This track is weird. I'm not going to lie to you. It is weird. Siberian Sunshine and Glacial Silhouette. It is, um, it's about the melting polar ice cap and it's about the disappearance of that part of our planet and the effect it will have. And all the sounds are, if you've ever listened to part of the, the ice wall <laughs> crack, break and drift away, it is, um, salut. It is an interesting sound. It's the lowest amount of bass you can ever imagine. And some of the weirdest noise, noise comes from ice. Like if you've ever listened to people skating over a frozen lake or pond. A lot of these sounds were incorporated and it ended up being um, like a military um, fanfare. It ended up being a fanfare. And it, it, it was interesting, the whole <laughs> sack. Thank you so much, man. That's very nice of you. And yes, at some point we will definitely bring out an acoustic guitar. Uh, it's almost inevitable that that will happen. So many people ask for it. I think I may use uh, a different brand through which to do it, but I'll talk about that next year when we start doing a lot more of the collaborative voting because um, we're gonna be doing a lot of, we're gonna kind of kick off a lot more collaborative voting in Chapman Guitars. So anyway, Siberian Sunshine and Glacial Silhouette uses lots of these sounds of ice cracking and splintering and exploding and then the water coming from it. And it ended up being this, this fanfare, but a really deep emotional fanfare. And, 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 and none of the tracks were planned. I hadn't written any of the melodies or harmonies. It all came through improvisation. And that one really surprised me because it was nothing like I had ever played before. It was very much more a deep, somber, emotionally moving catharsis. But one that when I listen back, I think it touches me the most. So I hope you like it. And then the final track is called Chromatic Aberration. And this is uh, a beautiful woodland, a clearing in woodland where you see the sun coming through hitting the grass. The grass is very tall. And um, do you know what a crepuscular ray is? A crepuscular ray is when the cloud is a break and the sunshine comes through it and you can see the light in a stream, a beam of, of sunlight. That hitting a woodland clearing and uh, standing in it and just breathing in nature and just feeling alive. That's chromatic aberration. Yeah, I know what it means. Yes, it has a deeper hidden Easter egg meaning. So it's six tracks. It's a new album from Monkey Lord. The album is called Chromatic Aberration. And um, yes, I know Atlantis has been found that it's in Africa. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> uh, and it was, um, it was terrifying. Recording it was terrifying. I basically did, with the help of Adam and Graham, my producers in Southampton, we came up with kind of a storyboard for each track. I described the landscape and I stood in it in my mind and I described the story that would unfold. So it's the morning, the wind is blowing in the desert, it's hot in your face. You know, you can see the sun beginning to come up and then you look around and there's a cactus and then there's a thing and then something happens. So each storyboard was created and then we composed the track from the storyboard and then I stood in it and improvised the whole thing uh, numerous times until something solidified. And I love that way of writing. A lot of it was written by me vocalizing, like I would sing and then make that guitar or just literally um, play the guitar over it and get it until it came out. And a lot of the time I'm just using fingers um, and lots of feedback and harmonics to create ambience. And I really wanted this album to be something that you could put onto in the background, this is gonna sound weird, in the background, and then you sit down and just play a game or chill out and it's there, but it's not interfering with you, but it's just nice that it's there. Or you could put on headphones and be really involved in, in this vast kind of world. 
So I, I, I'm, I'm happy that I've made it. It's the strangest thing I have ever created and I hope that you like it and it launches tomorrow. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all I had to say. I will now take some, some questions. Uh, oh, just thought the video, Captain Meets Yvette Young to see, yeah. Oh my God, so many, so fast, okay. How many entries have there been in the competition? Lots of entries and they're fascinating because everyone is doing a different kind of thing. And I know that it was, it was a very difficult competition. I wanted it to be difficult. I wanted someone to win who was musical and I was looking for a musical person. So, so far I, I have three or four people under the radar that I, I really like. Um, <clears throat> I should have said, sorry, yeah, you just asked which platforms it's launching on. I mean, it's on the internet. So I decided to use the internet to launch this music because it just seemed to be a little bit, I mean, I don't know if I'll sell any, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, it's not, you know, there's no, there's, there are some vocals on it, but not many. It's, it's more just like, you know, me uh, singing some harmony stuff and backing and things. Um, but it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon, it's all over the place. So whatever, you know, wherever you want to find it, you'll find it probably. And um, I hope you like it. I hope you jam over it. That was kind of something else I wanted to be able to do with this. Kevin O'Connor, if you have a guitar designed to send me, that's cool, email it to me. Um, but make sure you send me an NDA. I don't want to, in case I've designed something that looks similar, it'll be safer. Hello, Zach. Thank you for watching the Anderton stuff. Roasted Ash. Yeah, I have thought about Roasted Ash. And uh, Roasted Ash is kind of a new thing. I don't know whether it makes a dramatic difference to a body. And I don't think ash is a good timber for neck. It's too soft for a neck. The reason we, we roast the maple for a neck is to make it more rigid and less susceptible to movement with weather changes. So the, sorry, Chi Ro, the album is called Chromatic Aberration. And the project is Monkey Lord. There's going to be a, a whole bunch of advertising on Instagram to follow this. So I just thought I'd talk about it now. Hello, Mr. Webster. Um, yeah, Reese Phillips. It, yeah, I'm sure it was. It was difficult for me. <laughs> and I wrote it. And I, when I listened back with the headphones and I was in the studio recording the guitar, I was like, what have I done? This is like, this is monstrously difficult, but it was a beautiful experience. Uh, anything to say on the fake guitar stuff going on? Yeah, there's fake guitar stuff going on. I mean, do you mean playing sped up? I don't really care about that. I mean, if people want to pretend, that's fine. I think less people are doing it than people think. And I think <clears throat> it doesn't matter. Because if they play live and they can't do it, they get found out. If they can do it, then that's great. Um... <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Any chance of getting a physical copy? <clears throat> well, I, I honestly hadn't planned to make any physical copies yet. Um, I genuinely don't know how well this will sell. It's not something I'm doing to make a load of money. <laughs> it was a musical thing that I needed to do. So, um, I mean, if enough of you want um, a CD or a vinyl, then yeah, I can, I can do it. Not a problem. But no one has CD players anymore, man. I mean, I don't have any CD players. Um, it... If you think you'd like a vinyl, then please just, you know, let me know in this thread or, or com contact me on Instagram, Rob underscore Chappers, and let us know because if enough people want it, because you have to make like a hundred vinyl and I don't want to have a house full of vinyl that didn't go anywhere. So it's one of those things. Bam only buys music on CDs. That's interesting. I don't think people bought CDs anymore. Trevor Slater wants a vinyl. Do a lot of you still have CD players then? Because I, I don't um, say something in Spanish. Una boca de lo jamón. I think that's a ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah, turns out a lot of people still buy CDs. I didn't realise that. 
You do as well, Mr. Dylan Mile. You'd all get CDs. Okay, so it sounds like CD is more popular than uh, than vinyl. Vinyl's more popular than CDs, right? I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I have literally no idea at all. I mean, I kind of guess at the end of the day, it sounds like some of you would, would get something. Um, okay. Off subject, but you may have launched an idea a long time ago with some of us. There's a big group of people who are still into bass. Chat my bass. Yeah, okay. So I've got to tell you, thank you for donating. I very much appreciate that. And you don't have to. I will try and read the questions irrespective of, of people paying. Um, Chapman Base is being revisited and it, it will definitely happen. Um, I, as you can probably imagine, we have a load of things that we want to make. Um, and I think we've been guilty of trying to do too much too soon. And we're not, Chapman's going on forever. My son will take it over, my daughter will take it over. And when I'm just sat on the beach, getting fatter. Uh, I don't want to do too many things. And we have a lot of people that want the hot rod uh, launched again. A lot of people who would like us to do um, other other shapes. And, and there is a lot of call for an affordable bolt-on base. So can I get a stuffed monkey lord? I, that would be really sick, actually. I should make an action figure. <laughs> that would be... Uh, that would be so cool. You know what? I'm actually working on a, on an advert right now. I should show you so that you guys can uh, can see. Let me flip this. So this is the some of the album artwork. It's um, this is going to sound like ass, but. So, um, yeah, who did the album artwork? I got a friend of mine called Graham from Geometrix did the album artwork. Um, I basically said, imagine, imagine Diablo. <laughs> imagine you come across a huge temple in Diablo, in uh, Diablo 2, obviously the best Diablo, uh, with the expansion. And it's in the jungle area. And imagine there's this massive um, monkey god temple there. Draw that. And he came up with this and it was absolutely perfect. So I'm really excited about that. And like I said, I really want to get out and tour it. I think it would be sick to go out and continue the, the theme. So to, to play the melodies and the themes, the harmonies, but then improvise around the areas where it was all entirely improvised. And um, I think that would be really fun. Massive pedal board, you know, Floyd Rose equipped, crazy type stuff. Uh, Rob, do you still game? Yeah, I do, but frequently on my phone now because it's a bit easier. I really, really want to get a new PC though. And then um, there's a new update coming out to Path of Exile, which has just got me really excited. So um, yeah, Dorje tour, not, not until the end of next year probably. Uh, Dorje's on a bit of a hiatus while the album gets done. Um, we've written, we've written most of it. It's just got to be recorded, but I have to tell you, I really shouldn't tell you this. What distributor do you use chappers for my music? I actually launched my own record label. Um, I figured it was just the right thing to do. Do you, you want to hear something? You want to hear something secretly? I know you do. Tour Germany. Definitely. Germany is actually one of the best places to tour, man. You guys cater. You feed us really, really well. Um, okay, so I get asked this a lot. A lot of people say, um, if you come to a gig, can I sign a guitar? 
man, if you come and see me at a gig, I'll sign anything. I've signed someone's mum before. <laughs> I've, signed, I've signed somebody's face. I signed a microwave recently. I signed a guy's toothbrush. Anything you want. We'll just hang out. I'm very informal. Um, so yeah, whatever you want to do. If you come and see me play, then we'll do that. Would you be interested in coming to see me play instrumental ambient music, light show on stage, me, massive beard, colorful clothing, shredding on um, stupid new Chapmans? I will tell you the secret in a minute. You would, wow. Uh, thank you. The, the, someone just asked, what's the smallest, lightest travel amplifier you can get? I'd say, get yourself, I mean, travel amp, probably a Katana 1x12. I'm not sponsored by Boss, but they're just great amps. You've got to tweak them though, yeah? The secret, look, I'll tell you the secret. You've got to turn the master way up and then use the volume sparingly because it, it reacts like you, the power section is warming up. It, it, it's intelligent enough to know that if you wind up the master, you start to get the sag in the power section. So you've got to do that. Uh, so, <clears throat> I, I have been asked to join, this is the secret, okay? I'm gonna tell you, but if I tell you the secret, please, please do me a favor and hit the smash, just like hammer the subscribe button and then pound, just app, just destroy the like button for me. And then, uh, and then share this everywhere so that people get to hear my music so I can infect their mind with the power of the Simeon Overlord Behemoth. So the secret is I've been asked to join a band. I've been asked to join a band and it's a new band and the members are all A-list um, metal guys. A-list, a like top, the very top. And it's, it's a project to record and release something um, and then kind of see how it goes. And I, I would be the front man playing a bit rhythm, screaming, singing, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's initially it terrified me because some of the guys in this project, I, I, I've been a fan of them since I was, uh, at, at, you know, my late teenage years. <clears throat> and for me, it's... Um, it's a massive opportunity to kind of take you on an exciting trip, but also it is an opportunity to be in a pretty cool metal band. Hard rock metal is where I would say it sits. Um, I can't talk any more about it than that, but it's, it's, it's very exciting. And, it, and as a result, it's meant that I've had to, although I am continuing with everything else I do, I have had to rearrange my schedule and, and arrange some things around it because it's it's pretty big. Um, we'll be talking a lot more about this in January because I'm meeting up with the guys at NAM, and um, it's I will say that it is uh, a super group uh, comprising some A-list guys, and I am honoured to have even been considered <laughs> to sing. Um, so yeah, anyway. Um, there you go. Chromatic Aberration, Monkey Lord, instrumental, ambient, soundscape stuff. Um, it's all about gut feeling and emotion and just playing guitar and making music. And um, thank you so much. What happened to Nat? She made me two babies and she's in the kitchen. <laughs> A lot of people think I'm not married to Nat anymore. This is really funny. Um, just because you don't see her doesn't mean she doesn't exist. Uh, also, something else I noticed that's a bit of a YouTube phenomenon for me is that whenever a woman is in a video, everyone assumes that I'm having relations with her. I have friends who are girls as well. Um, how's Lee? She's a nice wife. She's the best wife. Um, 
please bring Chapman guitars to India. I'd love to, but the problem is that, because India is huge for metal and rock and everything right now, but the problem is the import tax is vast, bro. It's not us, it's, it's the Indian government. The, the import tax is insane. Like they would be double the price anywhere else. You could probably fly to the nearest Chapman selling uh, country and then you still got to pay import tax, so I don't know. Um, miss Nat singing. I miss Nat singing. My wife is a phenomenal vocalist. She she is she's really 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 good. But I think the thing is when you when you have children, it's really difficult when you're breastfeeding and you know all that kind of stuff to find the time. I'm lucky that my job involves me doing this. You know, uh, have I seen a live band recently? Yes. The day before yesterday, I went to see Devon Townsend in London, and it was amazing. And um, I made friends with. Uh, with, with a whole bunch of the band members. Unfortunately, I didn't get to meet Devon. I did see him warming up some of his vocals when I went to the VIP bar, which was really cool. And uh, did Nat teach you to sing? Oh, hold on, this is insane. So many questions. Uh, a very dead horse, thank you. I appreciate that, dude. Do the band. Also, I meant a 30-inch baritone bass, six earlier, not just bass. A lot of us saw the old bass. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, very good point. Do an album like Les Paul and his wife. Yeah, I mean, Les and Mary were amazing. I, I've act, I actually had a real thing about Les Paul and Mary Ford. I thought they were an incredible power couple. It is inevitable that Nat and I will at some point release an album or something when the kids are a bit older. Because um, I'm never going to stop doing this, you know. Kevin O'Connor, you don't have to pay me to find your ML3. Um, if you email me, officialrobchappers at gmail.com with the details, I'll post it on Instagram for you. Uh, am I a bass player? No, I wish I was. It would really help me record music at home. <laughs> In fact, I don't own a bass. I really need to buy a bass. I probably should just make one and then I don't have to buy a bass. Um, Gary Lopez, this is a US band. So it's, it's going to mean a bit of a life change. Have I tried an Aristides? Yeah. No, I haven't tried an Aristides. Um, but I did get sent something today that was an interesting uh, image of essentially something that looked very Chapman-like, which I suppose is, is just very nice. Uh, I am coming to America. I'm coming to America for the NAMM show. So January, I'll be, in, I'll be in, uh, flying to LAX on the 8th, I think it is. And then I'll be hanging out that area for a bit before NAMM. <clears throat> and then I'm staying for the show. Chapman has a room at the NAMM show. So we'll be filming and showing off new products. We've got this really cool 10th anniversary guitar launching, which is really sick. And it's... Uh, it's, it's the rebirth of something old that you're gonna love. So I'll be there filming stupid videos and being an idiot and just touring around. I'll film the show on an iPhone and upload it so you can see the show. If you wanna see the real NAMM show from like point of view chappers, I will run through it with my phone and film it and put it on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe and you are ready for me to show you the NAMM show like reality point of view, rather than just like, you know, mic'd up cabs and SLRs and, you know, lighting and everything. Just real, I'll show you reality. It's better for you. The food, the fun, all that kind of stuff. Which guitar is my personal favorite from Chapman? It's the ML3 Semi Hollow. Uh, both of them, traditional and modern. Oh my God, so many. Advice for developing vocalists in less than a year will be 100% looking at serious lessons. Welsh mumbler. Uh, advice for a vocalist, I, I would say, you are what you do. I have learned this the hard way. Um, you are what you do. If you don't sing um, regularly, then you won't be able to do it when it comes down to it. So whenever I have a tour booked or a gig I have to do, I, I book off a month in advance and I am singing every day. It's difficult when you have to do a lot of things, like I have to do business and then guitar and blah, 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 but you just gotta do it every day. 
Am I related to Graham Chapman? No, I wish I was. Uh, Turgan Doitin, I think, Doitin. Rob, you're exploring a lot more genres. What's your favorite guitar playing right now? Um, I just really am in love with describing things that I see in my head. Oh, hold on, man. You guys have got to stop paying me. You don't have to. Uh, Henry Jones. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you own an older model Ghost Fret Pro and was wondering if I still play it. Oh, I do. I play the Ghost Frets all the time, man. On my wall, I've got... Wait, in this room, I've got four of them. <laughs> um, do you want to see something secret? Do you want to see something really, really exciting and secret? This will be a really good way to um, to end this. <laughs> that was... Uh, you do? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can just get something to show you. But don't tell anyone, all right? Because this is, this is really secret and then I have to go. <clears throat> just because I know you guys are Ghost Fret fans. I've <laughs> Sorry, you're propped against the pig, but anyway. Are you really ready for this? You better smash the like button to shit. <laughs> we made, um, we're making a bunch of swirls. These are obviously special one-off individual things. Um, it's what I call tone paint. So the more colors, the more tone. It's a pro ghost fret in a swirl. And uh, it's pretty crazy. But if you think that's good, because it is, and in fact, I haven't stopped playing in days, then you might like this. Are you ready? Oh, I love that I can do a reveal. <laughs> These are one-off individual unique pro models with swirls. I think we're only making 10 of them. This is blue, baby blue and silver. So, there you go. That was secret. I really shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> All handmade by, um, by an amazing guy. There's a guy called Richard Fay who does swirls in the UK. So we take a pro model, he does the swirl, and uh, we're making 10. So there you go. The, uh, the cat is out of the bag. Um, thanks. Thanks for watching. And uh, have an amazing day. If I don't speak to you live before Christmas, have an amazing holiday. May the bearded old gentleman of joy drop what you require through your fire entrance. And uh, I love you all. Even if you're nasty, I still love you. It's too bad. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.